not hard to plan for guests in advance. Extremely hard. So you just order what you think is probably going to come up. So I use my third eye. I like meditate on it. I mean, I use third eye very freely. I would say it's more of like my inner voice kind of instinct um, that blends in with the preference sheet, with the provisioning, what's available, the weather, how I feel, um, the first impression of the guest. It's everything blends together and I just pop it out. That's basically how I live my life, my everyday life, in every aspect. Uh, if I plan things, I find that they usually go wrong. Um, going with the flow, using my intuition, my basic instincts, I've, has always worked out very well for me. So I just, <laughs> I'm not gonna let down a winning team, you know? I just keep on playing it that way. It's wonderful, it's always a surprise, you know? What am I gonna make up today? And I push myself in that sense as well. You know, I don't have time to rest on a recipe. It's like, it's always free flow and that way I can always evolve. What's one thing you would never eat no matter what? I mean, that's a hard one. I've traveled a lot through Asia, so I mean, I would say like dog, but I might have eaten it already, you know? So it's, I, I, I enjoy trying everything. I don't want to die stupid, as they say, you know? So um, yeah, I enjoy discovering new things, new flavors, and even retrying things that I thought I didn't like initially. And that's something I really like to, to give to the guest. If they say they don't like something, I like to try and make them like it. Which bunk did you sleep in, yours or Riley's? Not mine, Risley. Shut up! Tell me everything. Do you know where Ashley slept? With Stop sleep. it! Crow's nest. On a yacht, you have everything you need except for that. So once there's a hookup, now your life is complete. You can sustain mm. all the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You got food, you got shelter, you got booty. <laughs> so now, Otherwise you, you wake up feeling good, looking up. good, because you're trying extra hard, and you see yourself in the mirror, and you're like, ah, there I am. Also, especially with Riley, we had like angry Riley, and then when Tyler came in, we had smiley Riley. 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 And it just made everything so much better. I'm more happy for them, and also it's less people in the crew mess when we get back from a club, because yeah. they disappear. There's just so many reasons. Have either of you had boat romances before? I've definitely had boat romances before. It's kind of, you know, like, it's a thing that happens with the crew. It always happens. There's always something that comes out of it because realistically, you're on this boat for months at a time, potentially, without seeing anybody else. So your earth shrinks. Everything shrinks. I wouldn't necessarily say they're a good idea because you sometimes settle. Just that's what happens. You don't have too many people to hang out with, so you're like, okay, well, I guess this will work. I feel like uh, in a boat romance, you qu you compromise more you do. than real life because yeah. you're like, okay, this is the hand I'm dealt. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make something out of it. And you end up living across the world from the person, and then you try yeah. to make this relationship work when you're done the co the charter, and you're like, this is it's not. It's just working. like, do we even like each other? Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> like, I was on yeah. an island. Boat romance is. Um, <sighs> You've got to tread carefully, um, especially on, on long-term contracts. If relationships go bad and you're stuck on the same boat with somebody, that's never a good thing. And you've got to be mindful of the rest of the crew. Um, you know, people don't necessarily want to be part of your relationship. And on a small boat, you, the rest of the crew do become part of the, the relationship because we're in such close quarters. It's not something I would advise all the time. It's something I, I kind of tend to get into myself. Um, but you've, you've got to be... You want to say something <laughs> else? <laughs> no, no, very quickly. Keep talking, though. Sorry. We're nearly out of time, but keep going. <laughs> you done? You almost packed? Yeah, nearly. We're leaving now. Are you just leaving together? Catch yeah. It. Bring it Oh, Bring baby! It. Bye. Guys. Bye. We'll miss you. Feels weird leaving, right? It's kind of exciting. New adventures. Yeah, exactly. What is your current relationship status? Single. Oh, he Very hesitated. Single. He he hesitated. Like, I, are you I, sure I would, you're single? I, I'd love to say I was involved with somebody, but I think my wife's still out there somewhere trying to find me. She's just taking her time. Oh. oh. So <laughs> love so and marriage. Uh, Laura, Laura and I are just. Uh, I, th 
you know, we just on a friendly basis. We we also check in with each other every now and then. Um, Laura's a cool chick. You know, we I think we've got a, a quite a bit in common um, in terms of where we are in our lives. Um, and she's just a really cool girl to kind of talk to and just bounce things off of. Uh, and when we see each other, we've uh, yeah. When we see each other, we have. <laughs> you know, we have a connection. It's cool. Laura's, Laura's just a, a fun girl. Any chance of rekindling anything with Ashton? Um, we talk all the time. He's awesome. He actually, like, we were potentially going to work together where he's working now. Um, but it didn't work out for me and my schedule. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You know, she's just one of those people, I think, that'll always have a place in my life. Um, where we just get each other, we understand each other, and we on a we on the same level. Are you open to, like, romantically? Yeah. Mm, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a no. <laughs> I think that with relationships, not all the time, but I think that they should be super passionate from the get-go and I think because we've had this like time apart it would be hard to kind of get back and also we live very far from each other so I don't think that you know I'm not into long distance. We live in two different countries on the opposite sides of the world we don't know where we're going to be in the next few months so that's something you go you go into the relationships knowing in the back of your mind but if we if I ever ended up in Canada or if she ever ended up in South Africa I'm pretty sure we could we would well I don't know I'm not sure. It's, it's hard to say. Is she somebody that I could settle down with one day? Probably. Um, if circumstances were different and we could try give it a shot, would I? Probably. What do you want to say about this, Ross? No, no, I've yeah. got nothing to say, bro. Like, keep talking, bro. You sound really good. <laughs> I've never heard this side of Ashton before. Oh, uh, when it comes to emotions and and everything like that, it's it's really like heartwarming to hear. You're rubbing off on me, bro. <laughs>
reality, the situation would have been a little switch there. I think that um, Adrian is definitely more snaky than Ashton. Hey, this is Ashton and Ross from Below Deck. Click here to subscribe and click over here for more videos.